Hello, everybody. Welcome to a new edition of Beyond the Pitch. I'm Christian Jack. This week, I have a lot of surprises for you. It is a big time moment in Canadian soccer as the men's national team get together for their World Cup qualifiers starting on Thursday night at BMO Field against Honduras. You can watch that game live on One Soccer or get your tickets to get into the stadium and watch this team take on Honduras in the first match of 14 World Cup qualifiers between now and March. On Sunday, they travel to the United States and take on Nashville. And then they return to BMO Field the following week against El Salvador on the 8th, again live on One Soccer. Three big games in eight days. And in preview of that, I sat down with a number of the Canadian men's national team players recently to bring you their story. And what a unique story many of them have. I'm delighted to announce a number of Beyond the Pitches that will happen between now and the final game in this World Cup qualifying window. And we start today with Monday, and that is Richie Larea Day for us here on Beyond the Pitch. Richie Larea is a very special man to talk to. Obviously, what a journey from League One to obviously disappointment with Orlando in MLS to now Toronto FC and a true difference maker uh, for this team. So sit back and enjoy my discussion with Richie. It goes a lot of different ways as usual. A fascinating discussion. I hope you enjoy it. Here is Beyond the Pitch with Canadian fullback Richie Larea. Richie, great to see you as ever. Big smile on your face. Always appreciate the time to talk with you. Uh, how are things? You know, the World Cup qualifiers are here. You must be thrilled to start playing for Canada again. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for, for having me on. It's always a pleasure to chat with you and break things down. But yeah, um, very important time coming for our entire nation, just short of um, a week. So um, yeah, it's exciting. It's um something I think a lot of people are looking forward to. Obviously, I'm looking forward to it and all the guys on the team are looking forward to it. So it's a very, very exciting time for our country right now. Do you feel the momentum? I mean, we're gonna we're putting this out there a couple of days before the first match. I feel it. I feel more people are even, you know, casual MLS fans or maybe European fans are starting to talk a little bit more about your team, a little bit maybe the way that they, they talked about the women's team. But you, do you feel it in, inside the team as well? Yeah, no, we feel it for sure. It's um, it's we all know how important a time it is. We're very ready. We believe in our squad, the coaches, all the staff behind us. Everyone believes what we ha- what we're able to do, and what we're about to about to do, and to make this country proud and bring it to heights that it hasn't seen in a very long time. So, uh, yeah, we feel it internally, obviously. Um, but it's it's a good feeling. It's a feeling that gives you an extra boost and morale for you to continue pushing forward. Yeah. I don't feel like there's the, I could describe your team ever as being tight, Richie, would that be a pretty accurate assessment? I speak to quite a few of your players and teammates in this team. And um, I mean, they've all got smiles on the face like you, they all can't wait to see the teammates again, the Canadian team. I mean, I know you've got a job to do, but it almost feels like you're going on vacation with your buddies a little bit here. It's, it's honestly kind of mad because um, I, we, we all talk about it. And it's like, for me especially, or not only me, but other guys on the team, I'm playing with guys that I grew up playing with or against my entire club career here in Ontario. And then there's other guys that are older than me that I idolized um, growing up, like seeing Oso in camp, seeing Daniil in camp, seeing Kaba in camp, uh, Atiba, Junior. list goes on and on. These are, these are guys that you... Um, you, you grew up and like these were the guys, you know what I mean? So like now you're teammates with them. So it's, it's such a cool gel that we have on the national team because like I said, I have guys that I played with, uh, guys that I played against and then guys that like I looked up to when I was um, growing up. So it's, it, it is, it's almost like a very cool dynamic and guys can't wait to, to get in to see each other. You guys all have different history, but I think everybody's got an individual story at one point and yours is probably heightened by more than others that, a story of that you've overcome adversity, right? That you didn't think you'd be where you would be today. Many of these players who represent this country this week, who are big stars, including yourself, you know, millions worth millions of dollars. There was a time where you never ever imagined this would come for you. I would imagine. Yeah. It's, um, you know, I, I don't do it often and maybe I should sit down and reflect to see how far I've come, but, um, uh, yeah, it, it is. Um, it is nice to think about. Sometimes I have my parents remind me, some of my friends remind me, and it's um, it's ne- it's neat to see that you know from where I was three years ago to where I am today. It's like if you would have told me the end of 20, 2018 that I'd be where I am right now, I probably I have a lot of belief in myself, and I think you have to as a player. But 
with the way things were going, I probably would have looked at you sideways. So, um, to be where I am today, sit in, in the position I am, it is, it is a, a nice experience and it's one that I don't take for granted. So how has it happened, Richie? I know there's a, many people who listen to this, Canadian Premier League players, League One players, people who love the sport, who want to get there. Uh, you, you, you know, you're an inspiration. Like, how is it? How is it? I mean, obviously, in a belief and in a confidence is one of the major attributes, I'm sure. But how has this developed for you? Who's been there for you? How has this gone for you in terms of this past the last three years? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the biggest things for me uh, going through what I went through at Orlando City was um, I had a good support cast within my representation and then also my family and then very close friends uh, kept me afloat, especially early days in, in, in Orlando. So, um, yeah, I, I, w- I would say them, they pushed me uh, to continue fighting, to not give up. And then obviously um, then meeting uh, wifey and having a son and having all that stuff, you know, that's, that's additional, um, support and, um, pressure, I guess you could say, um, for, for, for one. So I think when I got to that position, I had so many things going for me in a, in a positive direction in terms of off the field support cast that, um, yeah, they were really my backbone and helping me, um, push through a very difficult time. Uh, how much are you enjoying it now? I suppose on the on the greener grass, right? They always say grass is always greener on the side. You're kind of living, you're kind of playing on the greener grass right now. Yeah. How how are you enjoying that? And look, you're both for your club and your country. Consistently, you are playing a massive part in the success of this club and these 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 teams. How much are you involved? How much are you enjoying being a big big jigsaw puzzle in that piece in this puzzle? I um I I truly enjoy it because you know when growing up playing these are the type of uh games and positions you want to put in to have to make make an impact and be um good when you need to be good so yeah it's it's definitely good because when i was growing up this is what i dreamed of myself this is what i um all the way even in orlando this is what i thought of myself and where i should be as a player where i want to push myself to be as a player so to be here now is uh it's amazing and it it, it does feel good but then it's a, also a reminder that I have to keep improving and keep doing well to stay here and get even further than where I'm at right now. So it's, um, it's, it, it, it's good. It gives me one, a reason to be, um, to feel blessed, but then also a reminder that like, uh, things can also go south pretty quickly if you don't do the right thing. So it is, but it, it, it is, um, a nice feeling to be able to contribute for both club and country. And, and I get the feeling that you're not the only one. There's so many of your players within the Canadian men's national team who, you know what sports is like, Richie, right? When you're trying to prove something to people that don't believe in you, you're wasting energy, right? I don't feel like there's many people at all within this squad are trying to prove to John Herbert and his staff that you belong. You, there's a sense that he's already allowed you to feel like that you do belong and you can just express yourself. Yes, 100%. John... Is, is good with that where he um you know he speaks to us a lot he brings us together and he like as a coach gives each and every individual the confidence they need to to perform so yeah he obviously reminders here and there but for the most part it's pretty fl- uh free flowing from him where he the guys he uh brings in he trusts and he he knows they can perform from the first game to the third game whatever it might be he knows that guys will be ready so it is um a nice feeling. He's built a nice culture and with him, his staff and the staff behind the scenes too, it's um, just one big family. And then it, 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 make, it makes playing so much easier because he feels so much more relaxed. Interesting stuff. Fascinating, really. How, how is it with the, the switches of formations? Because I know you're a pretty cerebral player as well. You guys switch up quite a lot. You've got a lot of tactical versatility. We've seen you play as a rampaging fullback now quite a lot, but you can play as a in a back four. We saw you go over to the left during the Gold Cup as well. How much are you enjoying that, thriving through those, th- th- those challenges that are being set on you? Yeah, I think this is what you want as a footballer. You want to be able to challenge yourself in different ways. And I feel like I've been challenged my entire career and I will continue to get challenged. So playing... In those different positions, positions I have played before as well. It's um, it, for me, for me, it's fine. I, whatever I have to, wherever I have to play to contribute and help the team win and uh, play well, that's um my character and that's what I'm gonna do. But it also, I think there's nothing wrong with being versatile because in the end, it just 
helps whatever individual it is uh, get a spot on the team or be able to contribute in uh, a lot of different ways. So that's something I try to harp on and try to be adaptable and versatile in whatever situation I'm put in. So, um, yeah, I think um, I, I enjoy it and I, and I do like it, whether it's right back, left back, left wing back, right wing back. It's, um, it's fun. And especially when you're playing with this group that we have, it, it makes it so much easier. I tell you what, mate. I would not like to be an opposing fullback going up against you. You know, you're, you're such a soft-spoken guy. But on the pitch, you, you, you've got the fire in your eyes, and then when you're in a one-on-one situation, I don't know which way you're going left, left way, right way, and then you win so many penalties. There must be a great feeling to just perplex these opposition's fullbacks who know they're scouting you, by the way, yeah. and you're still getting the better of them. That must be a great feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That it, it is a good feeling. I'm just trying to. Do, do whatever it takes to help the team and continue to improve. So whether it be that or whatever else it might be, I'm trying to contribute however I can. No, I get that. Collectively, let's talk about the team a little bit in the Gold Cup because what a, what a tournament that was for all of you. I mean, you, the United States, you concede early after 20-odd seconds and then you outplay them on the pitch, right? For the majority of the match, you lose the game. Uh, talking about outplaying, you're comp- comprehensively better than Costa Rica. And then obviously the Mexico game is, is, is what it was, you know, a brilliant performance by you guys. How do you reflect on that in terms of going toe-to-toe with three CONCACAF giants in a row like that? Yeah, I think that was a uh, big time for our group. And we, we believe in it ourselves and we knew we could put uh, together performances like that, no matter who we were playing against and no matter who we had on the field, we weren't trying to make excuses for anything. So we looked at that as a big opportunity for us to be able to put a statement out there to the rest of CONCACAF. I think we did that. Like you said, we conceded to, in 15 to 20 seconds against the U.S. But after that, I mean, after 10 minutes had gone by, they didn't really see the ball. They didn't have really any ideas and it was all us. And then against Costa Rica, I think before the whistle even blew, we were, <laughs> we were, we knew we were going to beat these guys. That's how confident we were. And then the Mexico game, was one that we knew would be challenging, but we had to give it our all. And I mean, it's, it's Mexico and, and people know that they're, uh, they're a good team, but we didn't care about that. We know we're a good team. We believe in ourselves. So um, yeah, I think that was a big statement for us. And it showed us that it doesn't matter who we're playing against. We can play against them. We can outplay these teams. We should beat these teams. So um, yeah, for us internally, very, a very good feeling at first, not great because we lost to Mexico in the semifinal, but then, you know, for me personally, a few days after it took me three to four days to like sit back. And I was like, you know what? Like we brought it to those guys. We didn't give them anything. And we should have walked away with the, with a win. You know, they, they were spent. We were going after them from minute one till a hundredth minute. So it was, it was a good feeling for, for us to know that we're able to compete with these guys and we can, we can beat these guys. And, it's not the way it used to be anymore. So, and, yeah, but, like like a true heavyweight fighter, they felt your punches, right? Like they may not have gone down at the end, but they came away with bruises on the face, and they know next time they play you, they know it's gonna hurt, right? That's the, that's the key. You said there about three or four days after. Take me in the mind of a high performance athlete a little bit when you're in that kind of huddle at the end of the game. They just score in the 99th minute. You guys put everything into that match. What's that like? Is there is there can you? at that moment be proud of how you're playing or is it just pure dejection at that moment to be honest with me for me personally when um the game first finished i was you know obviously normal stuff pissed and i wasn't really thinking about initially at how we had played it was more like oh like we lost like we were so close again to the final we we felt like we had the group to win the entire gold cup which i think we did so um yeah at first i think mentally i was more in a you know, like pissed off mood or, mm-hmm. or whatever you'd like to say. But then, like I said, a few days went by and, you know, you have to, as an athlete, you need to, people love to say you need to have a short memory, whether good or bad, because it helps you move forward. So it was, I don't know, the second or third day I ran, I was reflecting. I was like, okay. And I, and I did, I watched some of the game back and I was like, okay, we brought, like, we brought it to these guys. These guys, you know, were wasting time after scoring their first goal. So it shows you already from then that they're like, okay, we need whatever advantage we can to piss these guys off or slow them down. So just seeing that stuff, then, you know, put a smile on my face because, you know, there's not many people 
maybe outside of our national team, that would have been like, oh, Canada's going against uh, Mexico. This is, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure how this one's going to go. Or, oh, maybe this isn't, this isn't going to be a pretty game for us. And, you know, we walked away, heads held high, and we had a good performance. So I think um, mentally I went from obviously the post game to being pissed and angry and whatever other emotions it is to then, you know, having that short memory reflecting really quickly on how well we actually played to then saying, you know, onto the, onto the next now. Yeah. That's, that, that's a great way of looking at it. You're a mid twenties guy. And I say that because this group is like, it's really young, right? Like you're not old, uh, but do you feel like a little bit more like one of the most experienced guys in there? And do you like that kind of mentorship that some of these young players look up to you? And, and also like, I, t- I think it was Kamal Miller who told me, you're one of the guys who keeps it really light. He's just such a funny guy making jokes all the time. Do you enjoy that kind of thing? Because it's never just about football, is it, Richie? It can't be, right? It can be over-consuming otherwise. Yeah, no, that like, like um, Kamal said, I think we have a group where we have so many different personalities that um, we have people that have their own personalities that bring different guys together in the group, which is perfect. So I feel like we have a leader, a bunch of different leaders in the team in different aspects that um, reach, like are able to reach other people with the way they act. So yeah, Kamal is one of the guys I speak to um, a lot in the national team camp. And yeah, we, I, I definitely mess around with them a lot and I try to keep spirits up obviously, but then people also know when it's time to play. I'm, <laughs> I'm very serious as well. The, those jokes go out the window and now, you know, game, uh, I have my game face on and ready to do whatever it takes to win. But, um, yeah, I mean, being in the mid twenties, it is kind of crazy to think that I'm probably on the older spectrum of the players from the group that we have, you know, cause we have so many guys that are younger than I am and are pushing through and, um, uh, a few more that are going to push through, I'm sure in the next year or two. So, um, it's, but also very good. Um, we have a young team, but there's a lot of, young guys, even guys around my age, which is still young, that have a lot of caps under their belt already. So I think that helps this, uh, helps this national team for this World Cup cycle, which we, we have all sets, uh, all eyes set on for this one and thinking of this one only and wanting to come out of uh, the octagon on top and qualify for the World Cup. But then you think about it, with the age group range we have, this also makes for a very good team for the next World Cup cycle as well. Mm-hmm. So it's... Uh, uh, like a, a perfect age age range, I feel like. Yeah, absolutely. Not even at its peak yet, I believe. Um, it is a it is a group with so many different backgrounds and obviously African descent with yourself. But when you cross that line to start the game and oh Canada sings and oh Canada starts and you're singing that together, that seems like a real moment of pride for you guys. What do you think of at that moment? How special is that for you? Who do you think of at that time? Yeah, um, it, it is a very special moment. Like you said, everyone, there's people from all over, but we're, you know, all born in Canada and have some very major connection to Canada. So um, when we do get together, when we do sing the, sing the national anthem, I'm, all of us are very prideful about it because, you know, everyone has their own story. You know, my parents migrated here 24 years ago. So, you know, this country has given me and my family a new life and, you know, when I go and play for the national team, I feel like I'm not only playing for myself and my family, but for, you know, other people that were in my family situation, other people that Canada's taken in and they've been able to call this place home. And, you know, it's given, I- I'm sure if you speak to guys on the national team, they'll give you all different reasons, but pretty similar that this country's helped their family progress in life. So like when I, when I play, it's also for those because when I was younger, you know, dreaming, dreaming about playing in a World Cup, dreaming of watching my nation play in a World Cup, you know, dreaming of St. Clair instead of being Italian and Portuguese flags during the World Cup, it being Canadian flags, you know, just little things like that that I thought would are cool. So when we when we play, I'm kind of thinking of those those type of things because I'm sure the ones before me as well thought of stuff like that. I want to play for the pride of the country and the young guys coming up. So that's the exact same feeling I get when I whenever I put the jersey on and whenever I hear the anthem. Wow, that's really powerful. Good for you. I, I love that. Yeah, changing the flags and getting more people to know. Back to what we said initially, right? When more people are starting to be aware of this team happening and cheering for Canada. Um, you mentioned your, your your parents there. 
uh, I don't know whether to apologize or smile about. Sometimes I called you Richie Lai. Sometimes it was Larea. Was, was, was that okay? Because I know there was a little bit of a mixed communication during the last camp where we weren't sure yeah. what to say. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure that, you know, we were still good with that because I know. No, 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 no. You're good. You're good. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah cause, so, so we're good with Larea, right? We'll stick yeah, with that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I thought. Because I, and I mean, both, you know, always want to respect what, what you have to say. Um, the, the coaching staff play a big part though, right, Richie, and the culture that you guys have created, because it's one thing for you to say, we want to be ourselves, express ourselves, joke around, turn off. That culture that John Herbin and his coaching staff have set must be a massive part of the pillar of the success. Yeah. Yeah. The structure John's come in and created within this national team has been, I think probably one of the best things that uh, someone's done for this entire national team program. So it's, um, that's massive. He's, you know, he lets us know, he, he, he just, he, he just gives it to us uh, straight up, you know, when it's time to be able to relax and have a good time, when it's time to work, when it's, you know, time to do whatever it is to do, he lets us know and everyone respects him. Everyone knows he's uh, brought this national team to a place that it hasn't been in a very long time. And it, he has a, you know, big hand in what's happening right now. So yeah, him and his, his entire staff and even the medical staff, the backroom staff, everyone has, created a culture here that when people come in, it's, you know, everyone's happy. Everyone's, you know, first day hugging each other, catching up. So that's what it's become now. And it's, but it's, it's an awesome, awesome feeling to, to come into camp with this structure and culture that John's created. Last couple more for you and I'll let you go. Thanks so much for your time. What's it like training and sometimes going one-on-one against someone like Alfonso? It's difficult, man. You got to, <laughs> you know, you don't know whether you should get on him tight or else he wiggles around you or you give him space and he annihilates you down the wing or whatever it might be. So it's, um, it's, uh, you know, m- maybe in the moment, not fun, but like when you look at it, you know, you're going up against for me, for me, the best player in CONCACAF, you know, is, is on our team and we get to play against him uh in training day in day out so it, it helps you as imp- improve as a player and then you also know when it comes crunch time and game time we have the best player in CONCACAF playing on our team so it's um obviously a, a huge ask for him but it's such a pleasure for all of us you know uh for him to be able to score the goals he scored assist draw penalties just make plays for for us it's um it's massive so it, it is nice to to have him on our team, not so nice to go against him in, in training. I bet. So, so Honduras first, U.S. away, and then El Salvador. Quick thoughts on that. Obviously playing two games at home, and you've spent enough time away. So my, I would imagine you're delighted to play at home in front of the Canadian fans at BMO. And then, uh, look, you don't, know, you don't need no motivation, do you, to play the U.S.? <laughs> None at all. Um, but like you said, I think it's massive that we get to play um, the – Honduras game and the El Salvador game at home. It's going to be obviously a special feeling. I don't think the team's played here since the U.S. win. And then also it might be the first set of, I don't know, you know better than I know. Um, it might be the first set of qualifier games at BMO Field ever, right? Yeah, back to back like that. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. So, yeah. Um, uh, it's, it's going to be exciting. The fans are excited. I'm telling you, the country's excited. Guys on my team who aren't even Canadian are excited and asking me questions. So it's it's gonna it's gonna be a big time. Everyone's really excited for it. And then, yeah, to play against the U.S., you don't need any extra motivation there because we beat them in 2019, and they turn around and beat us as well. So, um, and then we just play them again in uh, in Gold Cup. So this is gonna be since I've been in the national team, our fourth meeting with them. So it's um, obviously a big game for us. We know what's at stake. They know what's at stake, and. Yeah, I think the group is extremely ready for these three games that we're going to take it uh, game by game. You mentioned the history of BMO. It's unprecedented, right? I mean, the fact you get three games in an international window is unusual. I mean, it could say it's a lot of games, but it, you know that, that feeling that you have is like a club team could probably certainly be an advantage. Like these are going to come fast, right? 14 games by March, you're going to know. Do you allow yourself to dream? Like I get a feeling this group doesn't want to hide behind anything. You feel like that you're going to go to Qatar 2022, yes? Yeah, yeah, this group is in full belief that that's where we're headed. So um, we we know that's that's at the end of the tunnel and that's the light at the end of the tunnel and we all know it's there and that's what we're trying to achieve and we will achieve. But I think first and foremost, we also have a very um, short-term um, plan, which is go game by game. So first, 
all we're thinking about is Honduras, but with sight that this game is the game we need to win and to win all as many games as we can in order to get into the World Cup. So mm-hmm. we, I think it's um, a bit of a, a two-way way of thinking is where we have our sights on Qatar, but also know we can't get ahead of ourselves and we just have to take it game by game. Fascinating insight. I love it. Look, from Sigma with League One now to being not just a member of the national team, but an outstanding difference maker wherever you're asked to play. It's a privilege to watch you continue to go forward, my friend. You continue to be a great, real inspiration for so many Canadians out there. You should be really proud of yourself. Continue it. Good luck this week. I know it's an enormous week for the national team and for you as well. So enjoy it. Uh, Wishing you all the best. And again, thank you so much for your time and your insight. Thank you, KJ. I appreciate you bringing me on here and um, all the best to you as well. Again, thank you to Richie for that conversation. I truly hope it was one that you enjoyed. Fascinating to hear how he's really comfortable now playing in different positions, how he continues to talk about keeping it light, the camaraderie in the group. I loved how he said they knew they were going to beat Costa Rica in the quarterfinals of the Gold Cup because you know what? The way they played, you could tell that they knew it as well. How he idolizes the likes of Junior Hoylet, Atiba Hutchinson, Jonathan Azorio. Uh, obviously, the, the, the camaraderie in that group continues to come through and they will continue to do that. That will be a familiar theme on Beyond the Pitch this week. As I said, I've got more guests coming for you. Stay tuned for another one on Tuesday as I sit down with another fascinating character and what a story this is. Alistair Johnston will join me on Tuesday's edition of Beyond the Pitch. I hope you enjoy that. I hope you enjoy this one. Continue to come back to campl.ca for all of your Canadian soccer news and and, and continue to listen to our newsroom podcast as well. For now, this has been Christian Jack talking to Richie Larea. Thank you. Enjoy the games. God bless and take care.